Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of my Terraform Basics series, a series intended to examine the fundamental components of Terraform. This time, we are going to talk about how to use functions in Terraform. Let's dig in. The Terraform core binary comes with a set of built-in functions that can be used to manipulate data within your configuration. There are a bunch of different function categories, which I'll touch on in a moment, but first, I'd like to go over the general syntax of a function in Terraform. The syntax for using a function is pretty straightforward. You start with the function name, followed by a set of parentheses, and inside the parentheses, you can pass arguments to the function, which can be either literal values or variables. The number and order of the arguments is defined by the function itself, so you'll need to check the documentation for the function you're using. For example, we'll use the lower function, which converts the characters of a string to lowercase. It's very useful for situations where a resource requires all lowercase for a particular attribute, like the name attribute of an Azure storage account. So the function is going to be lower parentheses and then the string that you want to set to all lowercase, I'll use tacos are great, because they are. Now this will return tacos are great in lowercase. Some functions don't take any arguments, such as the UUID function, which generates a random UUID. So the function for that will be UUID, and then just empty parentheses, and then it produces a UUID. Other functions will take multiple arguments. And sometimes the last argument might be optional. Since the arguments are positional, you'll need to provide them in the correct order. So good idea to look up the documentation. The lookup function is a good example of a function that takes multiple arguments and has an optional argument at the end. The lookup function is used to retrieve a value from a map given a key. Now, I know you can do that just with the standard lookup syntax. You don't actually have to use the lookup function, but let's take a look at the function first. It starts with the function name lookup, then parentheses, and we're going to give it a map that has two keys with values. And I'm going to look up key one. This will return value one since the key key one exists in the map. But what if the key doesn't exist? If you use standard syntax, you'll get back an error from Terraform, but with the lookup function, you can provide a default value as the third argument. My updated lookup function call now has default value as the third argument, and we're looking up key three in the map. This function will return default value since key three doesn't exist in the map. There's also a few functions that inherit Weird syntax from Go, like the max function, which takes a list of numbers and returns the largest one. So max, parentheses, one, two, three, four, five. That looks pretty normal, right? And it will return the number five, which is all well and good. But chances are, if you're using this function, you're gonna pass it a list of numbers in a variable. So you'll need to use an ellipsis to unpack that list. Now the syntax is, max parentheses, and then a list of one, two, three, four, five, and then dot, dot, dot. In Golang, that's known as a variadic function, a word I had never encountered before I started using Terraform. Now, don't worry if you don't get it right away. There aren't many functions like this, and the behavior is well documented. Essentially, something needs to expand that list into separate arguments that are passed to the function and the ellipsis, or variadic function, is the way to do that. While we're on the topic of interesting functions, maybe we should take a look at some of the categories of functions as shown in the documentation. One of the first things I noticed when I started using Terraform back in 2016 was how bad the documentation for functions was. I actually spent several months doing a daily blog post on each function to explain how it works and what it does. 
Fortunately, I'm happy to say that the documentation has improved significantly since then, rendering those posts mostly obsolete. HashiCorp has grouped the functions by category, which helps you find the thing that you want to do. Here in the docs, we've got functions for manipulating different data types like numbers, strings, and collections. There's also a series of functions that deal with transforming data like encoding, hashing, and cryptography. Then there's helper functions that deal with the file system, date and time, and IP networking. If you've ever tried to manipulate IP addressing with regular math functions, you'll know how painful that can be. The networking functions deal with both IPv6 and IPv4 addresses, which is, that's pretty useful. With all these different functions available to you, how do you test them out and make sure your expression is correct? When I first started using Terraform, I would write an expression and then run a plan and apply to see if it actually worked correctly. I would create an output just to see the result of an expression. It was painful and tedious, and it would start taking longer and longer as my configuration grew. And then I discovered the Terraform console command, and suddenly, life got way better. The Terraform console command drops you into an interactive shell where you can test out expressions with Terraform syntax. If you launch the console in the same directory as your configuration, it will also load your state data and values defined inside the configuration. This means you can test your expressions with real data and not just have to create something approximating it. Back over in VS Code, I have a directory that has a simple Terraform configuration in it, and it's used to deploy a resource group and then later a virtual network to Azure. When I launch the console, I've already deployed the resource group, so I can run a simple expression to get the location for my resource group. So I'll run Terraform console to start up the console, and then I'll enter in Azure RM resource group .main .location, and it returns the location of my resource group. And this will work for any valid expression from my configuration. Whenever I'm unsure of the exact syntax or structure for a function, I'll drop into the console and test it out. Once I have the right expression nailed down, I can copy that and paste it into my configuration. For instance, I'm trying to use the VNet module from the public registry which expects a list of subnet names and a list of subnet prefixes. In a local value, I have a map of subnets. And as part of the deployment, I want to prepend the name of the subnet with the environment name. Now, I'm not 100% sure on the syntax for that, so I'm going to test it out in the console. First, for the subnets, I want to try to get all the keys of the subnets. So I'll use the keys function keys, parentheses, local dot subnets. And sweet, that works exactly as expected. Now I want to add on the environment name to the key, which I can do using a for expression. So I'll generate a for expression that returns back a list. And I'm looking at the keys in the list of keys in local subnets. So I can use that keys function again. And the value I want to get back is the local dot environment value and then the key value which is going to be the name of the subnet and once i run that sure enough i get the environment dash the subnet name for my subnets all i have to do is cut and paste that from the console into my configuration then to check i'll run an expression to get the subnet prefixes as well there's a values function that will do that which will return the values of a map Sure enough, I run values local.subnets and I get back those subnet values, which I can now add that into my configuration as well. So I'll cut and paste it in. Now I can feel confident that I got the expression right since I was able to test it directly in the console. When you're done with the console, you can exit it by typing exit or by hitting control D. Terraform is going to hold a lock on state data while console is running which will prevent others from working on the configuration, so make sure to exit when you're done testing. One question I get a lot is whether you can write your own custom functions for Terraform. In other programming languages, it's fairly common to define a method or a function and then call it somewhere else in your code. Terraform doesn't have that exact capability, at least not yet. 
there are two ways to extend Terraform with custom functions. The first is to create a module that does data transformation and call that module whenever you need it. A great example of this is the label module from the Terraform registry. The entire module is just a series of local values that are combined together to create consistent naming conventions and then emitting those results as outputs. If you think about what a function does, it takes some input, does something to it, and then provides output. That's exactly what a Terraform module does. The second way is brand new in Terraform 1.8, and that's the ability to create custom functions in provider plugins. This is super new, and you would need to code those functions in Go, which is outside the scope of this video. But I'll link off the post that HashiCorp did on the subject down in the description. Terraform functions are an integral part of HCL. You can use them to manipulate data and transform it as needed. The syntax is pretty straightforward and the documentation now is excellent. If you need to test how a function works, you can use Terraform console to test out your expressions. While you can't define custom functions in your configuration directly, you can leverage modules and custom functions in provider plugins. Now that's gonna do it for this episode of Terraform Basics. If you'd like to continue your journey, the next video in the series should appear somewhere around my head, as well as a subscribe button if you think I've earned it. Until next time, keep calm and Terraform on.